You'd never say it out loud, not at the gym, not at work, not even with your closest friend, but in the back of your mind, the question's been there for years, maybe decades. Am I normal? In this video, we break down the common misconceptions and actual truths backed by science to reveal what is actually the real size in most adult males. For millions of men, penis size isn't just a curiosity. It's a silent obsession, a quiet fear that simmers beneath confidence, undercuts self-worth, and hijacks intimacy. And here's the strangest part. Most men who worry are actually completely average. According to a global review of over 15,000 men published in the British Journal of Urology International, the overwhelming majority, over 90%, fall within a perfectly normal size range. So, why are we still so insecure? The answer? A toxic cocktail of unrealistic comparisons, cultural distortion, and bad information. Picture this. You're 13, 14, maybe 15 years old. You stumble across your first adult video, not realizing what you're seeing is performance not biology. That man on the screen? He wasn't chosen at random. He was cast, like an actor in a superhero movie, hand-picked for exaggerated size, shot from the right angles, digitally enhanced, edited for maximum visual impact. And yet that image sticks. It becomes your reference point. It shapes how you view yourself, even how you believe others might see you. Now imagine compounding that with locker room bravado, crude jokes, and silent comparisons. It's no surprise that studies show up to 60% of men report some level of dissatisfaction with their size, even though over 95% fall within the medically normal range. Only 5-10% to of women say that penis size is very important in a partner. So, why are we so obsessed with measuring up? Because we were never taught the truth. Not in school. Not in health class. And certainly not online. Instead, we were left to fill in the blanks with myths, misinformation, and shame. So let's fix that. Let's answer the question you've never asked out loud but have always wanted to know. What is the normal penis size? And how do you measure it accurately? Without distortion, guesswork, or shame? Let's separate biology from fantasy, fact from fiction, and give you a new lens, one grounded in science, not in security. Because there's one more twist to this story. Even the way men measure themselves is often flawed. And that's where things really start to unravel. Think of it like this. You're trying to weigh yourself on a broken scale. You'll never get the truth. And the more you compare numbers, the more confused and discouraged you'll feel. The reality? Most men are measuring wrong. Some press the tape too far forward. Some start from the skin instead of the bone. Some measure from underneath, which can add extra centimeters that don't reflect actual anatomy. Others don't measure at full erection or stretch flaccid length incorrectly, leading to wildly inconsistent results. That's why in medical research, scientists use a very specific method. It's called the flaccid stretch length. Here's how it works. Stand upright. Take a ruler or soft measuring tape. Place it on top of the penis, starting at the pubic bone, pressing gently into the fat pad to ensure accuracy. Then, while flaccid, gently stretch the penis outward, not forcefully but firmly, to its full natural length. Measure from base to tip of the glands. This method has been proven to correlate closely with erect length and is considered far more reliable than measuring when erect due to variances in arousal, environment, and blood flow. For girth, take a soft measuring tape or a piece of string. Wrap it around the mid-shaft, the thickest part of the penis. Make sure it's snug but not tight. Mark where it overlaps. Then measure the length of that string. This is your circumference, what scientists refer to as girth. And just like length, Measuring it while erect provides the most accurate data. So what do those numbers actually mean? What do they say about you? We're about to reveal the real averages, straight from the most comprehensive studies ever conducted, and they might shock you. But even more surprising, we'll also show you why some men overestimate their size, and others dramatically underestimate it. Because this isn't just about inches or centimeters. It's about perception, psychology, and power. And once you know the truth, that quiet fear you've carried for years may finally disappear. So now you know how to measure. But what do those numbers mean? In a landmark 2015 study published in the British Journal of Urology International, scientists analyzed penis measurements from nearly 15,000 men across the globe, making it the most comprehensive meta-analysis to date. Here's what they found. The average erect length was 13.2 centimeters, or just a little over 5 inches. The average erect girth? About 11.5 centimeters, or 4.5 inches around. Not 8 inches. Not 10. Not what you saw in that film, or what some stranger bragged about online. 
just a bit over 5 inches long, and that's the global average. And here's the part no one tells you. 90 to 95 percent of all men fall between 10 and 16 centimeters, that's between 4 and 6.3 inches. Let that sink in. If you're anywhere in that range, you're not below average. You're not lacking. You are, by every medical and scientific standard, completely normal. Now, what about the extremes? At one end, we have the clinical definition of a micropenis, less than 7.5 centimeters, or about 3 inches, when stretched or erect. At the other end, there's the macropenis, which is considered anything over 24 centimeters, or 9.5 inches. Extremely rare. Genetic outliers. Not a benchmark for manhood. Not a goalpost to chase. But here's where the story twists again. Most men don't fall outside the average range. They just think they do. Because perception isn't reality. Not when you're comparing yourself to fantasy. Adult film actors? They're not regular guys. They're selected for visual impact. And even then, the illusion is enhanced with camera angles, staged lighting, silicone prosthetics, and in some cases, digital enlargement. A 2016 investigation by Men's Health magazine uncovered that some scenes are even altered in post-production to extend the size digitally. It's not just exaggerated. It's engineered. But your brain doesn't see that. It just sees bigger. And somewhere deep down, you start thinking smaller. Even worse, many men compare themselves in the mirror while flaccid, when the body is cold, relaxed, or under stress. The truth is, the penis is incredibly responsive to temperature, anxiety, and blood flow. A cold room, or a moment of stress, can shrink it by half its normal size. Compare that to someone fully aroused, well-lit, and edited, and the comparison becomes absurd. But that absurdity turns into insecurity, and insecurity turns into anxiety, and that anxiety spreads into relationships, into confidence, into self-esteem. And yet, none of it is grounded in biology. None of it is science just distortion. And here's one more twist. In a study conducted by UCLA's Department of Urology, researchers found that a majority of men who sought penile enhancement already had normal measurements, and even after procedures, 40% remained dissatisfied. In fact, many of those procedures come with serious risks, especially when they're not medically indicated. Studies show that beyond a certain threshold, around 6.5 inches, increases in size don't increase partner satisfaction, and in some cases, can decrease it due to discomfort. So, if that's the reality, why are so many men still pursuing procedures, pills, or pumps? Because they haven't heard what you just did. They haven't seen the data. They haven't measured correctly. And they haven't questioned the myth. Now comes the most important part. What can you do about it? Because while size is mostly genetic and fixed by the end of puberty, there's a lot you can do to optimize how you look, how you feel, and how you perform mentally, physically, and sexually. Let's break down your men's health toolbox. Tool number one, lose fat around the pubic area. This is the simplest, most overlooked game changer. As you gain abdominal fat, especially visceral fat, your penis begins to retract beneath the fat pad. You're not actually shrinking. You're just hiding part of what's already there. A 2019 review published in Andrology found that men who reduced waist circumference by just 2 inches saw visible gains in flaccid length, up to 1.5 centimeters, purely from better exposure. What to do? Target weight loss with smart nutrition and strength training. Focus on compound lifts, walking daily, and cutting processed sugar. You don't need to chase a six-pack. You just need to uncover what's already yours. Tool number two, boost blood flow naturally. Blood flow is everything. Your penis is not a muscle, it's a vascular sponge. The fuller the blood flow, the firmer and fuller the appearance. So optimize your circulation. Eat nitrate-rich foods like beets, arugula, and spinach. Add L-arginine or citrulline malate. Speak to your doctor first. Stay hydrated. And quit smoking. Nothing kills penile blood flow faster. Oh, and don't forget pelvic floor exercises. Yes, kegels for men. Strengthening the muscles beneath your pelvis can improve rigidity, stamina, and control. They're invisible, free, and backed by science. Tool number three, check your hormones. Testosterone is your biological fuel. It shapes everything from libido to mood to vascular tone. And when it drops, so can size indirectly. Low T doesn't physically shrink the penis, but it can reduce nighttime erections and blood engorgement, which can make tissue less responsive over time. If you're over 40, it's time to check your levels. Ask for a comprehensive male hormone panel. Total testosterone, free testosterone, SHBG, and estradiol. Don't just guess, get real numbers.
If you're low, consider natural interventions first. Better sleep, more zinc, intense workouts, and reducing alcohol. But if needed, a board-certified specialist can guide you on safe, medically supervised options. Tool number four, stop comparing and start connecting. This might be the hardest step, but it's also the most powerful. Size is not a measure of masculinity, not your worth, not your ability to satisfy a partner. Study after study shows that emotional connection, attentiveness, and confidence outrank size in every survey of partner satisfaction. It's not about inches, it's about intimacy. And confidence? That's built from knowledge. You've just armed yourself with it. Tool number five, get real medical advice, not forum opinions. If you're considering enhancement, stop and breathe. Ask yourself, am I doing this for me or because I think I'm not enough? If it's the second answer, don't go to a clinic, go to a therapist because body dysmorphia is real, and the consequences of acting on it without understanding the root cause can be permanent. If you are curious about procedures, consult a board-certified urologist, not a spa, not a backroom, not an internet ad. Ask about safety, ask about reversibility, and ask yourself if it's worth the risk. Because the truth is, you might already be chasing something you've had all along, normalcy. The majority of men fall well within the medically defined normal range. And that's not a consolation prize, that's reality. So, what's the takeaway? You are not your measurement, you are your mindset. And the real power lies not in changing what you were born with, but in understanding it, respecting it, and optimizing it. Because when you stop obsessing over size, you can start focusing on health. And when you do that, everything improves. Your performance, your presence, your confidence. So, ask yourself this. What's more powerful, being above average on a ruler, or being in control of your body, your mind, and your life? You already know the answer. Now, do one more thing. Drop a comment with your questions. We answer them anonymously. Subscribe if you want more truth, less noise. And if you found this helpful, share it. You never know which friend is carrying the same question in silence. It's not dangerous to talk about this. It's essential, because the truth, you are never too small. You were just misinformed.